Hi everyone, this is Team Bioshine from UC Davis. Due to the negative impacts of the mica industry, we have created a mica replacement by using cellulose nanocrystals. This Statista research paper outlines the most frequently used brands of all beauty products. 100% of the top 15 brands that produce highlighters use mica in their product. We also surveyed 40 women and found that 78% of our consumers were either somewhat or not aware of the use of mica in beauty products. Due to this large gap between awareness of mica and frequency of highlighter use, we decided to target both consumers of highlighters as well as manufacturers like MANA as the audience for our product. We also learned more about the numerous concerns of mica's production and use. There is a significant child labor issue with respect to mica mining. Children are exploited and labor laws are frequently violated. Additionally, many respiratory health concerns arise for the workers due to frequent long-term inhalation of mica during the mining process. Environmentally, mica is a non-renewable resource. Mining for mica leads to significant deforestation and displaces wildlife, which poses a major threat to the well-being of local ecosystems. Many products containing mica as well as synthetic mica replacements are not biodegradable. In terms of cultural concerns, many consumers of the beauty industry do not care or are not aware of the unsustainability behind their cosmetic products. Bioshine wants to change all of this by promoting ethical values and offering a sustainable bio-based alternative to mica in the beauty industry. What inspired Bioshine? We look to nature for our solution. Mica shines, but so do many organisms. Take butterfly wings, beetle exoskeletons, squid skin, or even bacteria that produce iridescence. It turns out that cellulose, one of the most abundant organic molecules on the planet, can be coaxed into forming iridescent particles known as cellulose nanocrystals. Research articles such as this one by George and Sambapati helped us understand the optical and mechanical properties of cellulose nanocrystals, their high crystallinity and thermal stability. Since a highlighter needs both shine and a skin compatible base, we chose glycerol for our gel solution. The materials that we will use are bacterial cellulose, known as BC, cellulose nanocrystals, known as CNCs, and glycerol. We start with bacterial cellulose, BC, because unlike plant-derived cellulose, it has no lignin, hemicellulose, pectin, or wax, and therefore this reduces chemical waste. Also, nanocrystals of BC have the highest crystallinity and thermal stability. Bacterial cellulose is used in various applications, such as packaging, food, and facial scrubs. BC is generally recognized as safe by the FDA. Cost-effective BC is grown in rotary bioreactors in medical industries. To achieve high output of the biofilm, Comagatabacter sp strains will be used. This bacteria is non-pathogenic, so it is harmless and safe for humans. Compared to others, this strain creates the highest yield of cellulose. Therefore, we will work with this bacteria in our project. To sustain it, we use the standard media for pharmaceutical quality bacterial cellulose. This media contains carbon, nitrogen, and other macro and micronutrients required for bacterial growth. Glucose is commonly used as a carbon source. Because glucose is found in fruits, we're also considering alternatives, such as fruit waste from farmers. After harvesting our BC, we sterilize it with food grade sodium hydroxide. We then wash it with water until neutral pH is achieved and dry it at room temperature. The cell-free BC is then hydrolyzed and functionalized by treatment with sulfuric acid for an hour. The mixture is centrifuged to separate the cellulose nanocrystals from the acid. An ultrasonicator helps the nanocrystals stabilize into an iridescent film, which occurs through evaporation-induced self-assembly. We then grind up the film into tiny shimmery particles. Unlike the carbon chains in the bacterial cellulose, the final composition of nanocrystals is a helical structure, 
which allows different wavelengths of light to pass through it and reflect back. This allows us to see a range of iridescent colors. Different amounts of ultrasonication can alter the pitch of the helical structure, changing the wavelengths of the light that is reflected. We therefore hope to be able to produce red, orange, blue, and violet colors once we are able to return to the laboratory. We then add our iridescent nanocrystals into glycerol, a biodegradable and non-toxic gel solution that is commonly used in eye drops, lotions, food, and beverages. Glycerol can be made from vegetable oil subjected to hydrolysis, which then forms glycerol and fatty acids. Although cellulose nanocrystals have been used in gels, plastics, glazes, and food packaging, Bioshine's application of them for shimmer is absolutely new. The risks of Bioshine first include our product may irritate very sensitive skin. Tests will need to be done. Second, our product is not waterproof and humidity might alter the integrity of the cellulose nanocrystal structure. Once we are allowed to experiment in the lab again, we will explore this. Lastly, the acid waste from synthesizing cellulose nanocrystals could be misappropriate. With more research and development, we hope to minimize acid use and acid recycling in our production process, as well as research other methods of producing stable, highly crystalline cellulose nanocrystals. Bioshine strives for a circular product life cycle. We hope to partner with a variety of vendors to create a sustainable product. Bacterial cellulose is ground with glucose inputs and sterilized with food grade sodium hydroxide. Glycerol comes from the vegetable oil industry. To get the nanocrystals, we hydrolyze the BC using sulfuric acid. This is not an ideal solution. With more research, we hope to discover a less toxic process. We then combine the nanocrystals and the glycerol to create Bioshine. Our containers are made from cellulose acetate butrate, or CAB, which has been used for pens and handles. It is biodegradable, resistant to UV rays and outdoor weathering conditions, which will preserve the shelf life of our product. Companies like Omicron Plastics create CAB containers. Our product is then transported to retailers where consumers can purchase Bioshine. We hope to offset the carbon dioxide produced through transportation by fuel-efficient vehicles. After consumers use Bioshine, the cellulose and glycerol will wash off and biodegrade. The containers can be reused or recycled. The waste sulfuric acid in our current process is neutralized and then recovered by a company like Veolia, which claims to provide a cost-effective, environmentally sound alternative to traditional sulfur management systems. This allows us to then reuse the sulfuric acid in our process. Finally, the leftover product can be mixed with fertilizer to help bind vital nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium molecules in soil, prompting the growth of new sources of glucose. These are the cited sources. And these are the research articles that we worked with. Thank you for listening to us, and we hope that you enjoyed our presentation.